jump in do the fishing topic okay so what you were talking about yes. was your inexpensive timu finds yeah. mm -hmm. in earlier in the uh fishing news right yep so if you're getting this on wednesday hey go check it out he has more to say yeah now the the topic is i put in a prompt into ai a couple yeah. a couple of different ais right yep and it's about large mouth bass fishing because that's where you've spent a lot of your adult time fishing for sure so we're gonna go over these that's, ai prompts and yeah. we're gonna just chat it out so essentially we're talking about how to fish largemouth bass which mm -hmm. in a way we've done but that's that's yeah. really what the topic is but this is like yeah. ai compared to real world experience and how is the ai doing yes. right yes i'm intrigued yeah me too so Sounds that's why I want to do because we've talked about doing the full AI episode where we just don't like I just have AI write it. We don't say anything until the next episode. And I was like, wait <laughs> yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. I got an idea. And this this is where that idea. That's how this idea sort of came about. But what I wanted to talk about uh, with the because we've talked about it so much. And I think that's going to come up. A, no, I know that's going to come up a lot in this topic of fishing for largemouth. We're going to say we've said that a lot. Um, you know, listen to the backlog. If you're new, this is, you know, something that we've said a lot in the past. And that's why I wanted to bring this up about the, the Timu um, purchases that you were talking about and how it's like, initially it looks good, feels good. And then yep. you get it out just a few times and you're like, God damn piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it didn't take long to just be like, Oh my God, dude this is breaking. Like I'm, <laughs> 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 right and and that's the um the reason why i wanted to bring that up is because ai is like the shortcut ai is the like instant feedback it's the it's the um like the prompt was give me tips how to catch largemouth bass yeah and so i i hit up a couple chat bots and got answers and it's the it's the instant answer. It's the instant feedback, and it it's the like TikTok of feedback. And I'm thinking to myself, if we would have made a short about the Timu, because you said I gave it a glowing review, and I'm like, well, I don't think you really reviewed it. Yeah, I don't. But yeah, if I we would have made I... a short about it, Tim, if we would have made a TikTok, if we would have had that short form video, you would have it would have <clears throat> sounded pretty fucking awesome. And now you actually get the long form out of it. And you're like, these things are pieces of shit. Yeah. So I think that's a, f that's, that's one of the downfalls of the internet right now, <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying oh, to say. Yeah. Cause yeah, no, I totally get that because your AI is taking a sample. It's not like fact checking. It's taking from what it finds. Right. And it's like scouring the whole internet. Right. And like you were pointing out that before I made the correction, it could have heard me being like, it's actually not that bad. Right. And then, uh, you know, AI is just like, hey, guys, it's not that bad. If and you're then, looking for but, some affordable gear, try Timu. Yeah. Why is this? And now you're kind of like, mm, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. No, maybe not. But <laughs> AI is still like, well, I don't know. It's out there. <laughs> right. It's one of right. the things I found. Yeah. And I think that's one of the benefits to like hanging on for the <clears throat> ride. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's take the people on a ride, Tim. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, the other thing is I've been thinking about too that here in these last few episodes, it's been, I feel like we've been lacking a little bit of our original idea of like trying to teach people about fishing and tell people like, come, come fish. Like, I hope you're finding this and you're not that into fishing. And the real AFTV podcast is your way in because 
you saw us talking about pro wrestling and you're like, wait, these guys talk about fishing too. I'm bike curious. I'm going to go check it out. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and then we kind of can get you into fishing. And so that was why I also did this, this prompt because it's going to be a, it's going to just kind of, we're going to get into like, how do you fish for largemouth bass? Yeah. Maybe it'll end up being the title, but I think AI has got to be in there because otherwise, you know, the AI is not going to like the topic that much. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. We got to let it know. Pay attention. AI. Over here. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So this is how it started. This is how one right. AI started. Okay. It's not a tip. Yeah. It was being fancy. It goes, ah, Ooh. the elusive largemouth bass, the underwater ninja that keeps anglers on their toes. Ooh, Let's dive right into ninja. those tips so you can reel in those big ones. Nice. Hell yeah, that <laughs> underwater ninja. I like that. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody call a bass an underwater ninja. Right. <laughs> It's like you just made shit. it up, dude. I'm pretty sure you just made that shit up. I've never heard. Dude, is a bass this like, ninja. I mean, are designers going to be a thing of the past too? Because you tell it something like that and then it says underwater ninja. Yeah. And then you go, good one, AI. Now take underwater ninja and make me a shirt. Yeah. Tell, make that bass an underwater ninja shirt. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you have a shirt that's branded the underwater ninja. Like I shouldn't say designers as a whole, but like, you know, you just ask it one thing. It comes up with an idea, Uh Yeah, but we are there to prompt it with the other stuff. You know, we're just the middleman and we go, right. Give us what you got. And it gives it. And then we go, "Mm, yeah, we like that. Right. Keep going on that path. Right. You know, I'm a person. I know what person likes. I'm Uh people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> I am people. I know what people like. <laughs> to answer that question, yes, the size of a design team is going to get smaller or not grow for sure. Yeah. Because okay. the need for a Photoshop expert in the sense of like a Photoshop manipulator, a Photoshop like um, person who is very good at combining images and manipulating existing images and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. That is working its way out for sure because you prompt the AI. Now I will say this so yeah. far, AI pretty yeah. shitty at it. Um, in fact, if you go back uh, to yeah. episode uh, 97, Oh, yeah, where it just combines the two. Dude, it has the funniest. Oh, no, you're talking about the the pro wrestling episode where that one. I was I was thinking of the one where you like prompted like two animals together and it just like. Oh, yeah. Spliced two animals together in the middle, basically. Like it didn't give you like an animal, like two animals that were mixed. Yeah, it was just like it was half of an animal, and then in the middle, it just became. It was another just another animal. half of an animal. Yeah, yeah, it was total <laughs> shit. Yeah, like that's not what I said when I meant combine a whale and a donkey. It just I could totally see that where I'm just like, hey, make it a like in my mind, what a ninja bass would be would probably be different than. I'm guessing that AI might prompt it where it just like looks like a ninja, completely arms and legs. And yeah. And it just has like a bass's head. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like, oh, that's corny. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, uh-huh. Not it's, and I, then you try to say like, like, okay, not exactly like that because I don't want it to have like human arms and legs. And then it does right. the same fucking thing again. <laughs> and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but... But it is true, like the need for like a Photoshop expert who combines things like that is is going away. I don't know yeah. how people like Adobe who are making a bunch of money off of Adobe stock photography, you know, because they have people on, they have people on, it's literally called Adobe stock and they have people, they have photographers that contribute to Adobe stock and they get paid as people download them. 
Yeah. I don't, I don't know how they think Adobe stock is going to continue to exist when you have Adobe Firefly that's an image creator, when you can just go fucking prompt it to say anything right. and it'll just spit it out. I, I, I don't, I don't understand that, how it's going to, yeah, you, they, they don't, they both don't exist. They just don't. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, the photographers are much better. <laughs> Let me get oh, that yeah. clear. The pro yeah, sure. photographers are much better. Like Getty Images still has a long tail on it. The the stock images for those mid to higher, you know, those like high, low level, mid to low highs, those yeah. graphic departments, they're going to continue to buy stock photography because humans are out there in the real world getting real photos. Sure. Anybody under that? Fuck that. I'm generating that shit for free. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But depending on like what you it's, like what we're going to be dealing with in the future, too, is definitely going to be better than what it is now. So yeah, what you it's just learning. said. Yeah. So what you just said, depending on when somebody hears this, it might be a completely different story where we're just True. like, oh, no, it'll it'll get better. But yeah, like I've already witnessed it get better. Like I've seen pictures of like faces that it's shown and you're like, mm -hmm. that skin doesn't look right. There's something wrong with those eyes. Mm -hmm. And now like I've seen pictures where it's like, that is almost perfect. And mm -hmm. you can't even put your finger on it. You're like, mm -hmm. I don't know even what is off, but I, I can tell it's can, fake. Right. But I There's, don't know why. Right. Yep. It just has to figure out what that one thing is that has it just still looking a little bit fake. Yeah. Because when I study the photo, I'm like, I don't, I can't even tell you what it is about this that. Yeah. Makes me. But it know still kind of feels real. like a mannequin, like just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell it's fake. Yeah. But I don't know why. Yeah. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Yep. On that note, here's how an AI will teach you how to fish. Ooh. Oh, I'm and also so after I asked it, um, yeah. I, I said, hey, yeah, okay, these are great tips. Anything else that you'd like to share? And it and it did this. Even without a human body, I can add fish your ass. <laughs> Suck it, nerd. You know you can't. <laughs> I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> I, that was aggressive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want a fight computer? God dang, dude. <laughs> uh yeah what do you th this was but my first question about the prompt was it says the elusive largemouth bass now i don't feel that way i don't the, i'm not a bass fisherman like you oh, are yeah. but <clears throat> i don't know is, the word elusive no, seems a little extreme for a largemouth damn bass. sure not elusive yeah <laughs> no yeah yeah. Elusive is the wrong word for sure. Yeah. Abundant. The the <laughs> reason it's the number one sport fish in America is not because it's hard to find. Right. It's because anybody can catch it. But mm -hmm. you got to be good to catch big ones consistently. You got to mm -hmm. you got to find them. Right. Like when it comes to a tournament, regardless of what the day gives you, you need to go find the biggest fish to beat everybody else. So yeah. that's why it becomes a competition because everybody can go and catch one. It's not hard, Espe yeah. especially if you're not using uh, artificial bait. Oh, sure. If you take a bobber and a live minnow and mm -hmm. cast it out where there's a bass, I don't know if I've ever, <clears throat> besides like when they're spawning and stuff, mm -hmm. if you were to... I mean, like if it was a <clears throat> if it was a fish that just got caught or oh, it was yeah. something that got spooked. So sure. for some reason it's not there. But if you came up on a bass and you tossed out a live minnow in front of it, it's gonna eat it. <laughs> like <laughs> there's a very small fraction of like reasons why it won't eat that minnow. Mm -hmm. But any other time, <clears throat> I mean literally 99 percent of the time that yeah. you put a live minnow in front of a bass it's gonna eat it yeah right you can do that with other fish and 
it might just look at it and swim away or just like feign interest. It doesn't care. Mm, mm -hmm. But the bass will eat it. Yeah. And there's, there's so many of them too. And they're not, they're not hard to find. It's not like walleyes where you got to go out into deep water and you got to have electronics to know where you're at in the lake. Uh huh. A bass, you just go to go find some like weeds in shallow water. Go yeah. find a dock. Go find structure. They hang around structure. It's not hard. You just go find a thing that looks different in the water and the <laughs> bass is thinking the same thing. That's not the same. I'm going to go hang around that thing. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think about this? Okay. So habitat matters. That's the like bullet point. And then it goes on to say sure. bass are picky about their real estate, both largemouth and smallmouth bass, which by the way, I only asked it how to fish for largemouth bass. So yeah. this AI is getting fancy. Both largemouth and smallmouth bass appreciate cold, clear waters. It's like they are sipping artisanal water from a crystal goblet. Look for the spots with good visibility, places where they can stock prey. Sorry, I'm just running out of breath. That's so weird. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Look for spots with good visibility, places where they can stock prey without needing night vision goggles. <laughs> this is the weirdest fucking paragraph. <laughs> it goes... It's like Artis- they're sipping artisanal water artisanal from a crystal water. goblet. That's what I always think. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You've not, thought that multiple times in your fishing. Not weird for to me. A hundred percent. It's the first thing I say to anybody. They're just like, what, do you got any tips? I'm like, look for the artisanal water. <laughs> and the crystal goblet <laughs> fucking cabinet, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, That's what I do. I just sit at the end of the dock with my goblet of artisanal water and I say, cause to catch the fish, you must think like the fish. <laughs> so I just sip it and I go, hmm. yes, I've, I like that cold water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's not, so good. it's not a hundred percent wrong, but it definitely like tried to distract you. <laughs> from like what it's saying with this other random shit and you go oh damn like it's <laughs> it's really trying to like be descriptive of yeah. like it's putting the emphasis on a weird spot like right try to find the clear water well okay first off you can't there's very few times where in a lake the body of water that you're fishing on is mm-hmm. going to go from like dingy to like super clear water. Oh yeah. It happens. Mike sure. Iconelli has a story about one of his first tournaments where he was in some dingy water. I think it was like a river system and he found a pot, like a hole. He was referring to it as a hole of like clear water. Okay. And he did great because he did get to that clear water area where the mm. fish were like hitting good right mm-hmm. there. You know, so like there, it, it's not super far fetched. And I wonder if that's like, you know, it pulls from everything on the internet. Mike Canelli talks about that in his book. That might Mm -hmm. be where it's taking like, Ooh, uh, you know, professional fisherman. Right. I'm going to take what he says here. Right. He says, look for clear water and stuff. So there's some truth to it. But the way it gets there is so wild. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I appreciate, a, I appreciate its effort to try to make like outside connections. Cause me and you have always like, one of the things when we started real FTV is like, dude, you know what is, there's no, there's no like humor in teaching anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. Not, it, it's it's hard for me to say this because I don't have high self esteem in this department, but I do think I'm a funny person, and I think together we're really funny. That sure. we really feed off each other's energy, but it's hard. It's it's hard for me to say that out loud. First of all, it's just hard for me to say that. But I think that 
was a big thing about Real AF TV and starting Real AF TV is saying like, we're going to teach people, but we're just going to talk. Like we're just going to talk normal yeah. and we're going to try to be, we're, we're not going to try to be funny, but we're going to use our sense of humor, our, our chemistry to make it funny. So that way you can remember it. And we always, we always do shit like that. We always do some yeah. weird, funny shit, but this is fucking weird. Places where they go to stock prey without needing night vision goggles. Yeah, with to just say that is like, <laughs> I don't know. They don't need night vision goggles because they don't rely solely on sight. That's why they can exist in a lake that looks like chocolate milk. Yeah, they don't. Right. They do like to. I mean, they utilize their sight and they like to mm -hmm. stock prey and stuff. Sure. But to be like, they like to go where they don't use night goggles, <laughs> night vision goggles. It's just like, hold up, AI. You missed it a little bit. I mean, <laughs> that I'm, I guess if you're talking about just preference, sure, maybe that is what they would prefer. Sure. But they're dumb fish and we can't ask them these questions. They will <laughs> set up, if they have clear water, they will use ambush points to their benefit and they'll do the same in like dingy water and stuff, you know, sure. because a lot of that kind of stuff, they can still cast shadows and shit. So oh, yeah. that'll spook the other fish, you know, when the, if there's a big shadow above them, they'll run real fast. Because they don't know, yeah, they don't know what the shadow is always coming from. Right. And could be a predator above them. Whether right. Like, oh, what was that? Oh, it was just cloud or whatever, but probably not a cloud, you know, something darker than a cloud. Right. Anyways, that was random. I don't know why I started. No, you're making, <laughs> you're, you're making good points because this, it really does make it sound like if you have a cloudy, dingy lake or a river that doesn't have good visibility that there's no bass in there. Yeah. And right. I, that's, that's just not true. Just can, simply not true at yeah, all. Right. Some of the biggest fish from down South are coming out of lakes that you can't see. I mean, they're coming out of lakes that are classified to be like low visibility and low, low visibility, visibility is that's like a great one way to two it. feet yeah one to two feet of visibility is like what's classified as low visibility okay mm -hmm. and if you're ever trying to like gauge what that is take like a white lure and drop it in the water mm -hmm. and like a lot of you know everything has its own kind of sink rate but a kind of rule of thumb is a lot of times it'll fall like generally speaking pretty close to like a foot a minute or a foot a second. A Sorry, second. a foot a minute would be slow as shit. Right. <laughs> but a foot a second where you just kind of like drop the bait and go one, two, and as you're counting, just wait until you can't see it anymore. And then you can mm -hmm. just be like, all right, it got to like six. That was, you know, six seconds. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. some of the bigger baits can fall faster or whatever. Or if they don't have very much drag, they can go quick. But right. if you take like a white lure and you drop it and you go one, two, and it's gone, you're like, damn. I can't, I couldn't see that's, that shit almost yeah. immediately. That's low visibility. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in that's, that case, they're not trying to sip out of their goblet. They're, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, <Right. wait. laughs> they're waiting to feel the fish. Move. That's what I was going to say. This yeah. is, this, this must be where like the buzz baits and like things that rattle and right. Shit like, that's on the surface that's, yeah, causing oh, the, surface. the stirring. Yeah, or like that's where like rattles come into play. Some of the clear water, the rattles can actually make them like not want to bite too much because the rattles are almost unnecessary and off-putting. Like they, mm. when they, you know, they, they don't need to hear it to see it. So they see it, but then they hear it. It might almost be like kind of confusing them where... Yeah. When yeah. they're relying more on their their sound than their sight, uh, or their the the lateral line where they feel the vibration, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that one the sound can help a lot because then it can help them like hone in, right, and kind of turn them on too, where they're like not really paying attention and all of a sudden they hear the and they go what the fuck is that <laughs> right.
Let me yeah. put on this goblet and get to work. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I can't get over that. It's so funny because it's almost like it's almost like the AI, you know, I don't know if AI is all, you know, it's learning and stuff. Yep. But it had to start somewhere. Like somebody was kind of like prompting it and telling it like, here's what you should think or. Yeah. You know, giving it inputs to get it to where it's kind of going. And it's like somewhere along the line, it thinks that it needs to zhuzh everything up like it's an author. Like clearly yeah. how it's telling you right. the story. Right. It's trying to write everything where it's just right. like large mouth and small mouth. And just like I just asked about large mouth. Just give me the tips. Don't right. I'm not you're not an art author here. And mm-hmm. it's trying to give you these different analogies and stuff. Yeah, and, that's a really good it's, point. It's like putting the emphasis on the shit that nobody cares about. <laughs> you know, like where it's just like. Well, yeah, wait so, wait until we. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's, there's let's, so let's many hit more of this. More. Yeah, there's okay, more. Yeah, let's, let's yeah. keep going. But no, you make a really good point about how it is like, um, like it is an author like trying to build. It, it feels like I want tips. And then in a small paragraph it feels the need to like try to craft a story, but there's not enough there. And so it just is like, yeah, yeah it's giving em- emphasis in like unneeded areas. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, like I was just thinking about that, like in certain situations, like when you're out there fishing and you see like birds are kind of like swooping down. Uh-huh. A lot of times they're kind of hitting like prey, like the, the bait fish, there might be like yeah. a ball of bait fish. Right. that they're honing in on that might be a, like a clue to go check that out right and the reason that those birds are there is because it's hitting the bait fish and the bait fish are what the bigger fish are trying to eat so you're like right. okay we should go over to that right and it feels almost like the ai would just be like look for the birds soaring majestically <laughs> through the skies and you're just like none no we're talking about the water here you're focusing on the wrong part <laughs> right right <laughs> yes we're not writing a fucking screenplay right um yeah on that dude here's another here's a great one this is the first tip that it gives know your bass basics largemouth bass mm-hmm. are like the cool kids at the freshwater party <laughs> oh boy they hang out in a mix of cover and structure. So the cool kids are always hanging out at cover and structure. Yeah. Picture them chilling <laughs> near submerged vegetation, fallen trees, rocks, and other cozy spots. These are their VIP lounges. So when they're scouting, think, where would a bass throw a secret party? Party emoji. <laughs> <laughs> It gave you the party emoji. Oh, yeah. It totally put the party emoji in there, dude. Damn, dude. I am going to start doing that. I'm going to start telling. <laughs> put the party emoji and shit. Well, not the, not the party emoji, but I'm going to. Oh. I like that what it gave us there because I'm going to. Like, if anybody's just being like, I do randomly have people just be like, what would you do? You know, because they know that I fish. Yeah. And they go, I'm going here. What would you do this weekend? And I'm just going to be like. I tell you what, when you're on the lake next time, get the lake map of where you're going. Take a look. And just be like, where would the bass hold a secret party? <laughs> that's what you want to do. That's what you. <laughs> that's a pro tip right there. <laughs> and not just like a lame kid party either. These are the cool kids <laughs> in the freshwater club. <laughs> Think about where the cool kids would throw the the secret party. <laughs> you know? Not some nerd land fucking party. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's such a great late 90s, early 2000s reference right there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, what are the, what are the kids into these days? Is like the fucking they had that. Well, I well, guess the internet's so fast now, you don't fucking either. need a land party anymore. No, that's I why. know, I but, know. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, land doesn't exist. Everybody's like, what the fuck? It, they don't even know what a does, landline is. I know. What you I just mean. seen a clip the other day where it was just like a phone line in the wall, and some girl was just like, "I just moved into this house. What kind of a USB port is this?" 
<laughs> that's yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude, that's that's funny. <clears throat> it's a secret party. They're, they're the cool kids at the <laughs> freshwater party. The cool kids at the freshwater party. And then they oh what what was the second line? Oh yeah. So this is where the actual tip comes in and it says they hang out in a mix of cover and structure. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Good. Picture them chilling near submerged vegetation. Picture them chilling near. Picture them just chilling, bro. Vegetation, fallen trees, rocks, and other cozy spots. I don't know what other cozy, cozy spots is supposed to mean, but like, okay, I, I think what they're what the AI is trying to say there is that like things that they can like kind of just snug into right probably structure and it couldn't think of another way to say like structure because it what it yep. the examples it gave you there was like weeds and rocks and trees yeah but yep. they're also constantly around boat lifts and docks, docks. and yep. whatever else you can find in the water if there's some structure there there's a good chance because it's just a food chain thing the structure that's there provides mm -hmm. them an ambush point. It provides them shade mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. A lot of times like algae grows off of that, which mm -hmm. just spark when you get that stuff going off or like the moss and stuff or not moss. So it's algae. I, I know what you mean. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it just starts the whole food chain. Right. You got the microorganisms down there that the fucking minnows are feeding on and yep. the bass are feeding on the minnows and, Right. It's just the whole shit. So it's not it's not wrong. It's just funny to hear how oddly specific it is and uh -huh. to just be like, they're like the cool kids. And just be like, so like the sunfish that are constantly in the same spot as them are just like the kids nerds pushing up their glasses, holding up the wall at the dance party or what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like the like the uh the i mean to be fair uh, the, the bass are the cool kids at the fucking party but they are the cool kids <laughs> and they they and they will get eight they're like they're like the jocks <laughs> like the night oh. like the jocks mm -hmm. that are just kind of like in the area and everybody's like when you know when when people walk on the dock when actual people walk on the dock and they go oh shit that's a big bass right there god damn and you see all the sunfish and you're not really excited about it, but there are a lot of people there. And you're like, look at all these fish. People do get just like, holy cow, there's a lot of fish. Oh, mm -hmm. and one over there is an athlete. <laughs> that He's got the Letterman's jacket on. So that's kind of wild. <laughs> you think he, he's got he that like striped Leatherman's jacket on the side. Yeah. He looks like Loud he probably really Big mouth. I bet. Yeah, big mouth. That thing is just like, oh, oh, shit. One of those kids got too close to him and he <laughs> fucked him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. That's good. Uh oh, here comes here comes some more coming in hot. Lure matching. So to get back to the 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 lure part that we we're kind of talking about with the dingy water yeah. in, in the habitat. Lure matching. Bass have preferences. Just like humans on a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> to win their hearts or at least their bites match your lure to what's on their menu if you're into tiny oh if they're into tiny bait fish serve up something that looks like your favorite snack texas rigged worms are uh oh let me try that again texas rigged worms are like the bass equivalent of a can candle lit dinner i didn't know candle lit was one word so um <laughs> oh i didn't know that either <laughs> yeah so that totally threw me off i was gonna say cantilever and i'm just like can't leave dinner don't no. make no sense yeah, let me try that cantilever. sentence again yeah nice texas rig worms are like a bass equivalent of a candle lit dinner classy oh, and hard to resist oh that's not wrong yeah that's that's definitely i mean it's a Texas rigged worm is definitely a go-to. They like worms and yeah. you can like, you can drag that across the bottom. You can work it like a jig and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a great lure. Like they a hundred, it a hundred percent found out like, yes, this is a good lure to use. Oh, nice. So like color and stuff plays a role. The weight plays a role, you know, but yeah. it's not wrong. It's, 
it's a good thing. The, <laughs> the fact it's clearly still just trying to use different analogies <laughs> where it's yeah. just like, oh, bass can be picky. And then we got to like try to match them up. What else can we match? Scours the internet. Uh, dating sites. That's a popular thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Humans are very picky in their dating sites. How come everybody's yeah. not just boning each other? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's with all these swipe lefts. If you found your bass on the Christian Mingles site, maybe don't try throwing out a daredevil. <laughs> They're not into those. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was good. Except really good. for the except for those one bass that everybody knows about. That girl that you found on Christian Mingle that everybody knew went to Christian school, but she wasn't really that you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then the daredevil is just the ticket. You know? <laughs> <laughs> So you might have found the girl on this website thinking that this was not the lure for her. And it turns out that she's just putting on a front and she would love nothing more than to get that devil. <laughs> <laughs> it just <laughs> so good. I mean, the, the analogies are like there. It's true. You could play around it for like you could play around with it yeah. for a while. It's uh -huh. It seems to be too like AI seems to be unintentionally funny a lot of times uh -huh. because it tries to use these analogies and it uses analogies that are like just so out in left field that <laughs> it becomes kind of random and random right. a lot of times is funny. It is funny. It's just, it just is. Uh -huh. So <laughs> yeah, it's totally funny. Yeah. I agree. And to, to go to the, the Texas rig thing and the lure matching, I know that that's right. We've talked about that before, but Texas rig is, it's not one of those, um, because we haven't talked about rigs yet. Um, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's not one of those with like fucking 18 fish coming off the back that you can't use here oh, in Minnesota, no. right? That's an Alabama rig. No, Texas rig ah. is just straightforward. Uh, it's a weight that's in front of the hook. That has the worm on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about that yeah. enough times. It just yeah. doesn't sink in when I'm not specifically. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a it's a real straightforward presentation. Just it's like a it's like having a jig, but the weight and the hook aren't attached, basically. Yeah. And the way you can hook the the worm makes it way more weedless than just having like a normal jig with the hook exposed oh nice So you can go throwing it in you know heavy cover and stuff yeah so that's yeah. why you think it picked up on it because it it scoured the internet and was like well i'm i'm Texas sure it's rigs said, are real kind of weedless and they yeah like weed. well i don't think it would have even went in that far it probably was just like what's a great lure that a bass likes and there are lists all over the place. You can put in like top 10 bass lures. Uh huh. And you're going to find a million YouTube videos of people talking about their top 10 bass lures. And you're going to find different articles of the top 10 bass yep. lures and all this different shit throughout time. Uh -huh. And without a doubt, constantly throughout the history of bass fishing the <laughs> texas rig is going to be on that list like in the top it three might, at least in the top 10 yes, like, on all of them so yeah. when it's consistently being there right it's just like you know mm -hmm. hey just i did my research your fish is gonna want to fuck this thing <laughs> <laughs> And so I just think the, the the analogy is funny, like when you think of it that way. Yeah. But honestly, when I was just thinking about it now, if you flip flop it, it does make sense that like that's how you're trying to describe it to like an old fisherman. Like you got your old fisherman that he uh, he's sixty years old and he's been fishing his old life and he's just never really you know he had a wife but they didn't really do much and then they got separated <laughs> he just been for the last 30 years he's been fishing he's just like well i just don't i don't even know what to do and then they, they come out and they're just like hey i mean 
think of it like the fish you're trying to catch you know it's a you go to the bar and there might be a lady there and she might not necessarily be into what you're doing but that's what you're doing out there in the fishing world you know you're you're casting out your bobber and nothing bites and <laughs> it's because they're not you know they're they're a little bit more aggressive than that that day you gotta you gotta work a little bit faster you gotta you gotta put in a little bit more effort you know you can't just <laughs> let it sit there and do nothing you gotta go out there and you gotta put in some work <laughs> you can't just sit there and let it do nothing <laughs> you gotta wiggle that worm around you gotta wiggle that worm around a little bit you gotta entice it a little bit you gotta you gotta give it something to look at you gotta <laughs> you got to let it know you're interested. You know, you can't just go sit next to the fish and expect it to jump into your boat. You got to. <laughs> right. May I suggest so, helicopter dick? <laughs> I mean, helicopter what? rig. I don't know. What did I say? <laughs> helicopter dick. To impress a chick, do the helicopter dick. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, a, it's funny because we're. I'm like shitting on the ai because it's so funny how it's saying it and at the same point it is kind of goofy to say it the other way but like if you were trying to give somebody advice that only knew fishing Mm -hmm. it's not a bad way to go so i guess the ai is being like yeah what do kids know about these days Ah, dating apps dating that's a that's a hot topic right Make the fish be like dating apps or some shit. <laughs> some shit. <laughs> but that's actually what I was going to say. I was like, oh, okay. Any kids out there listening, leave a comment in the YouTube video. Do How old do we sound saying land party and fucking going out to the bar to pick people up? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Does anybody do that anymore? I don't even know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't, I don't even go so. to, I don't go to the bar. I don't go to, I don't do shit. I didn't ever go to the bar. Right. To pick up a lady. I don't know what I don't know anything about the dating scene. I didn't have to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's just it, it's it's yeah. I've I've heard a lot about not a lot, I shouldn't say I heard a lot, but like on the radio on the morning shows, um, when I'm driving uh the kid to work, the kid to work, when I'm driving into work, dropping the kid off daycare, whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, there's all these like trending now and it is that like bars, like nobody, nobody's going out to the bars. It's like not a thing anymore. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, here you go. Hmm. Uh, habitat matters. All... So we go from, a... oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think the bars are full of people that are already together with people or yeah. are just lonely. Right. And they're just all there to drink. They're not there to find a person. Right. They're just there to drink. Yep. To drink or hang out with each other with your That's immediate it. party that you brought. Yep. Yeah. Or a lot of times, too, I hear, like, I still hear people being like, I had a bad day at work and I broke up with my girlfriend or whatever. I'm going to go to the bar and just sit there and, like, have a beer. And, like, I don't know about you, but if I am in a down place, I'm not going to go spend too much on beer. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I'm going to go, I'm I'm going to get like a six pack, 12 pack, whatever I'm feeling. And I'm going to go home and put on a fucking movie. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to liquor store and I'm going home and turn on Netflix. (laughs) Hell yeah, dude. I'm getting fucked up and watching the movie. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So Habitat Matters. Bass are picky about their real. Oh no! Fucking read that one already. Temperature yep. check. Yeah, you're feeling this, internet. Are you feeling this? Give me a temperature check right now. Let me know. Put the yeah thermometer. Which kind are we doing? Thermometer, right? A butthole. That's the only accurate butthole. way to get a temperature. Everybody knows that. Would you eat an anal thermometer? <laughs> 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 okay oh so here it goes bass aren't just cool so it continues to go down this like it's hanging on to that bass yeah. aren't just cool they're temperature sensitive <laughs> true zing that's a good one Mm-hmm. When the water heats Hot up, tip. they head for the shade, docks, submerged timber, weeds, beds are their SPF 50 zones. Eh, yeah. Yeah. Fucked it yes. up at the end. 
<laughs> SPF 50 zone. <laughs> yeah. So if you're fishing in summer and find those shady spots, it's like bass beach season. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not wrong, except for the, that's their SPF 50 zones. So like, <laughs> no, the, if we got SPF 50, we don't need to hide from the sun, you dumbass. AI. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's just called shade. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good to hear it actually say docks, submerged timber, weed beds, and things like that. But why did yeah. it put that in the temperature check? I don't know. It feels a little weird, well, but at least it, it got it, that out there. It does, like underneath the dock in the shade the water i mean the water doesn't change that much but in the weeds yeah. down in the weeds it can be like in the dense weeds it can be like 10 degrees cooler wow in the weeds than it is in the outside water wow yeah just because down lot. in those weeds it's shaded and it's not getting the weeds are kind of like stopping the warmer water from like mixing in it's just kind of in there so they can be in there mm-hmm and the you know like in the summertime the med the matted vegetation mm -hmm. like when you punch through that some of the biggest bass can be hiding in that matted vegetation because mm -hmm. there can be all sorts of shit underneath there and it's a nice big like it's cool there's a lot of oxygen in the water because it's the plants because are, the you plants, know, putting yeah. off oxygen and right. shit so yeah yeah it's not it's definitely not wrong because it's finding all this shit from uh yeah you know the valid <laughs> sources yeah like you asked it how to catch fish right and it it's telling you how to catch fish it's just saying weird shit while it's doing <laughs> <laughs> right 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 <laughs> yeah totally and yeah what you said and you know because this is where it kind of falls <laughs> short it's just like you know submerged timber and weed beds and stuff like that but like in the in the lure matching it didn't it didn't really tell me anything about that and you said punch through it's like what would i use to punch through to get to these better temperatures in the middle of summer here while we're while the water's still hot well so if you're fishing just like weeds and stuff that aren't super thick like i'm giving that matted vegetation as an example but if you could be casting around different weeds and stuff mm -hmm. that texas rig is going to work in a ton of different spots and you could even mm. use a texas rig to punch through matted vegetation mm. but that's when like a weight plays a role like you want to use a way bigger weight because you want that weight to like punch literally uh, punch through yeah those like weeds right yeah like a <clears throat> if you go and look at some of the different stuff um the <clears throat> sorry i got a frog in my throat. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead. Take take a second here, and I'll, I'll I'll say that it's funny that as we record this, the moon phase is very large, and that's our next. That's where we're gonna go after this. <laughs> but first, yeah, okay. I want to I want to talk more about like punching through vegetation and getting through vegetation. Yeah. So I might just gave myself the hiccups by the coughing. I'll, <laughs> I'll be able to fix it, but it might take a second. I'm going to have to hold my breath during shit. And then I burped in the weird. <laughs> <laughs> it a burp hiccup. Oh. Sometimes I do that. I don't know if that happens to anybody else, but I get like uh, a lump in my throat or whatever. And then I got to try to like cough. And when I cough hard, I give myself the hiccup. Pick up somehow. I don't know what the hell that's all about. <laughs> no, I don't like it. It's crazy. <laughs> it bugs the shit out of me. But punching through the matted vegetation, you just have to use a heavier weight for the most part. And then there's different mm -hmm. baits that on a Texas rig, it doesn't have to be a worm all the time. So you can put different stuff. There are different baits that will make it easier to punch through matted vegetation or uh I think I said weights, or did I say baits that time? Weights, baits, both. <laughs> okay. If if you want to, since we're not doing a whole segment on that stuff, yeah, and I'm not going to go off on a whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Just Google like punching through the stuff because you use like a bigger weight, and then they have like a, a I think Strike Kings is called like a punch bug, where it's literally oh. like the body is thicker. So it's a little bit like rounder and then uh -huh. the appendages are a little bit like smaller where they st still move once you get them punched through, mm -hmm. but it's not a bunch of shit that's going to get hung up on the weed as it's going through. Yeah. So, I mean, 
to to kind of say things we've talked about before, like creature baits, techni- usually have a lot of flailing parts on them and, yeah. and look yeah. different. And so this is sort of an answer. It's like, yeah, okay, it's probably a bug, but you'd probably also call it a creature bait in a weird way because it doesn't resemble like a real bug, I would guess, maybe. Well, kind of, but like but a bug is more of like not a creature bait. The Them bugs mm. are a little bit different. A, e- okay. A, because they have that yeah. chubby body on them and stuff like that. Like, yeah, a creature bait is almost like a fucked up crawdad. <laughs> yeah, like I, when I when I think creature baits, I think of something more like that you would put on, like you could work it on a Texas rig, but more of something that like you would put on like a Carolina rig, oh, which okay. a Carolina rig is very close to the same thing as a Texas rig. It's just more more custom fitted to just drag the bait like a Carolina rig. You Mm. literally just kind of like you you can just kind of like lift the rod slowly, Mm. lift the rod tip slowly. So the bait's just dragging across the bottom Oh, and then you just kind of like pick up the slack and then do it again. So like, like if you got a crayfish or if you're using something that kind of mimics like a goby or whatever, cause gobies just kind of like, Oh, scoot along the bottom. Sure. That kind of shit. So you're just scooting it along the bottom if, if it's like a rocky area and it's not like really thick weeds, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you're just kind of pulling it across the bottom. So like th- these punch bugs are just like, like you were saying, less flanges and stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the punching baits, I think, are almost in their own kind of category because you really don't use them anywhere else. They're kind of odd shaped ah. and you, would, you wouldn't want to use them in other, they wouldn't probably work sure but they're specifically designed to be able to punch through better and work right right because i don't think the fish think about it as much once it comes through that weeds you know yeah if something yeah. drops through that weeds and it's waiting uh-huh. it it's not seeing you it's not seeing much else it's just seeing something in the weeds and it goes Fuck, and it <laughs> yeah and it's that shit yeah <laughs> and it does a dumb fish brain <laughs> oh, go. yeah oh. <laughs> easy meal <laughs> yep <laughs> yep so as i mean when the no i mean this the pocket as the the podcast drops even we're in sort of a bigger moon phase we're in where you know it's like a full moon during when the old moon is it's it, they keep they call them super moons right we're so we're sort of in a super moon phase and we've talked a little bit about this again i said that was probably going to be something that came up as we there's something that was definitely going to come up as we did this. And so I got it. It gave moon magic. We're going to do magic now. Bass may not be werewolves. Probably not. But they do pay attention to the moon. Seriously. Some anglers swear by moon phases. When it's a when it's full moon time, bass might be more active. I like that it says bass might be more active because... Again, some will, it says it right here. Some anglers swear by the moon phases. Maybe they're hosting lunar. I don't even know what the fuck this word is. S-O-I-R-E with like the fucking umlaut over it. E-S. Soiree. (laughs) Yes. Maybe they're hosting lunar soirees. Who knows? Moon emoji. Why? What the hell's a soiree? How did you know that? <laughs> Just like a fancy French party. <laughs> I, don't, I go to them all the time. I'm, French, I'm a fancy French person. <laughs> You're going to largemouth bass moon lunar soirees like oh, all the yeah. time. It's just yeah. like your thing. Mm, just French fries, French toast, soirees. <laughs> fancy shit. You wouldn't know about it. You know, <laughs> fancy shit I know nothing about, right? <laughs> 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 the no, secret I side that i never knew about you yeah <laughs> yeah we just all sorts of french stuff <laughs> you just shit on that other half of canada that speaks english we're just like what the, these idiots <laughs> french canadian bro that that's what we say over and over we're the cool kids we, st- <laughs> we just find a cozy spot to cuddle up <laughs> <laughs> and drink out of drink artisanal water out of glass artisanal goblets. Artisanal water out of glass <laughs> goblets. And, and we just the cool kids at the party. I don't know what to say. 
No, I don't know how I know. I know a lot of shit that I can't really explain how I know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, can't no, know I, I know because I know. like you don't necessarily no remember where you learned it from or sometimes it's just like you have. Yeah. No, I get I get what you're saying. Hun, yeah. I just that's one where you say like, how do you and I'm not a fucking clue. No idea how I know what a soiree <laughs> is, but I know what it is. <laughs> just just got it. Um, yeah, it's finger so, foods. I think. Lots of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, a mousse bouche. That's fa- uh, that's what a soiree yeah, is. Yeah, the mousse bouche. Whatever your favorite food is, just make it real small. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a soiree. <laughs> soiree. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> um. So the moon phases. It says, you know. It, yeah. It does say, and I, I like this explanation of. Seriously, some anglers swear by moon phases <laughs> Ser- when it's full seriously. moon. Uh, bass might might be more active, and I'm going, yeah, okay, that sounds like something I would say. And yeah, so when I was a kid, the bank that we that my parents banked at had um calendars, and yeah, the calendar had the moon on it. You know, it'd have the like, here's the new moon, here's the half moon, here's the full moon, mm-hmm. here's the other half moon, and it would go through that. And then it also had a fishing, like had a little fish on it, and it would be like. It, nice. It would be like there was three different things, you know. There was the empty fish. If the fish was fishing was going to be shit, it was half. If it was yeah. going to be good, and there was like full fish, it was good. And I believe, and there's no way without seeing it again, that that just basically followed the moon cycle. Yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, that's cool. Whatever. Um, so I remember learning that really young. Um, I've never tested it. Um, but I, be- yeah. I, be- I believe it because like, you know, it's the old, the old timers. Yeah. What do you think about the, the moon? I do pay attention to the moon. Um, I was just looking, uh, looks like Sunday is supposed to be a good day. It's in the green. So that's good. No, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm just that. <laughs> But no, uh, if anybody else wants to go out there, you can you can mess around with it yourself and you can try to do your own experiments and stuff. Go just Google bass fishing moon calendar. Yeah. Put those words in any order you want. Mm -hmm. It will come up. Mm -hmm. Bass moon fishing calendar. Mm -hmm. Fishing moon bass calendar. It'll pop up. (laughs) It's going to get you there. And the bassmaster.com, it'll come up and they have their oh, yeah. calendars. And like um like this weekend, uh the the thing is they show the moon rise and they show the moon overhead, mm. the moon set and the moon underfoot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now those are your peak times and the good days are when they overlap with the sun. So you're oh. talking the solar and the lunar. Mm-hmm. So when you have those two, because the the solar obviously is something that everybody's gone by, you know. Yeah. At the first light, right. At the the dawn, dusk, those are better times of fishing because the fish get more active. Yep. So when you have the moon line up on those same times, oh yeah, bingo, bango, ready to go, go. <laughs> 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 They're good news. So, nice. yeah, you got uh, moon rise on Sunday is at 8.14 p.m. And then the moon overhead is midnight to 12.52 a.m. So you got like that hour. So just there's just an example for you. So you got that 12 to 12.52 a.m. Mm. And we've talked about it on the last podcast of like the smallmouth fishing. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was that like moon overhead period of the day that was when it just went ape shit bananas and I caught a fish every <laughs> cast. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's right. So, so I've been able to give an independent study of when during that moon cycle, mm-hmm. it was absolutely amazing right yeah and i've also been out in that same time and not caught much Mm. but 
I think they do get more active in that time, but there's still the rest of the puzzle to figure out. Uh They might be active as shit, but it's only on one thing that they'd specifically want to eat, you know, where it's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's there. There's more to the puzzle than that. Right. But if you can put it all together with that, then you're golden. Then you're going to. Yeah. So it has. Yeah. I I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Like I'll. Just for example of like the moon mm-hmm. calendar too, when you go and check it out, like the earlier this month, there was a couple of days where it was in the blue. The Bassmaster gives you colors for the days. There's red, which is tough. There's uh, yellow, which is fair. A lot of yellow days. Mm-hmm. There's green, which is good, which Sunday is a green day. Monday is even better green day. And then Tuesday is a green day. That's where like the times really start to line up Mm. Um, where like the, the moon rise Mm -hmm. is at the same time as the sunset on Sunday. So that's where you get to play. But like, there's also blue days that are epic. There was only two epic days this month. And one of them happened to be where the sunrise and the moon rise happened at the same time. Oh, you got the shit. The sun and the moon coming up at the same time. Uh-huh. And then the moon overhead is the same time as the sun overhead. It was right in the oh. a- middle of the afternoon. So right. they're both directly above us yeah. at the same time. And it's like shit like that where like when the two line up is when shit can get chaotic. Nice. Yeah. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, I mean, it like messes with the water and stuff, you know, the yeah. tides. Yeah, the way have the, the moon so, goes on the water of the earth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if and the the barometric pressure plays a role too. Right. You know, so if the moon and the sun have anything to do with how the water feels to the bass, like how the barometric pressure does, mm-hmm. it makes total sense to me. Right. Yeah. And it, I will tell you that I think that you can I I'll tell you this much. I don't necessarily like swear by it, mm-hmm. but if I see that the sun and the moon are lining up at the same time, I'm out there during <laughs> like I have to be on the water then cuz <laughs> it could be an epic time, you know. Yeah. You yeah. might you might have the best morning ever. And you definitely don't want to be that guy that sees on Facebook a little bit later that people on your lake were just like, this morning was vulgar. Fucking no, slaying no. up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been at the party. All the cool kids were there. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to burn through this one because we're, we're already going long. But Yeah, I know. So My I bad. just, I because I did, like I said, I did two prompts and this was only the one and that's that's great. That's totally fine. Um, yeah. I want to go through how this AI decided to close the okay. techniques. Remember, yeah. catching largemouth bass isn't just about technique. It's about understanding their underwater world. So channel your inner bass whisperer, grab your gear, and go make some fishy friends. Fish emoji, star emoji. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. Now this AI, <laughs> this AI was crazy. I'm just going to kind of like oh, rip yeah, through these. Let's do it. Give me a hand. Give me a fucking hands up when you're ready. But like. Like if I got to say something. Yeah. If you're just like, hold on, okay. I got to interject. Just give, give me on the video. Give me the fucking like this. Right. So I'll okay. read. I'll yeah. kind of read up in the air here. The reason why I want to like burn through this one is because it's in such contrast to the other one. It's crazy. Oh, really? <laughs> it, it is. And I, uh, I think yeah, it no, is. At I least. Was, Wait till I hear. Okay. Largemouth bass are popular target for anglers due to their aggressive nature and fighting ability. Here are some tips to help you increase your chances of catching a prize fish. Let's review quick how the other one started this out. Ah, the elusive largemouth bass, the underwater ninja. Like, yeah, (laughs) this is the comparison of how they intro each other. So, yeah, it's 100% an 
an author for like a magazine article trying to get somebody into fishing that doesn't fish a lot. Yeah. And then your second one is like a, a in fisherman. Right. Where they're just like, like an actual the chase. You don't need any of that shit. Right. <laughs> like here it is. Just don't yeah. worry about it. Understanding bass behavior. Understand their habitat. Largemouth bass prefer areas with cover like rocks, logs, and aquatic vegetation. End of sentence. End of prompt. Know their feeding habits. Bass are opportunistic fee- feeders, but they often target prey near cover. Making a connection there. Consider the time of day. Bass are more active during dawn and dusk in overcast conditions. Choosing the right gear. Last one didn't say shit about gear. Rod and reel. A medium action spinner and or bait casting combo is suitable for most bass fishing situations. Line. Monofilament. Fluorocarbon. Braided lines can be used depending on the fishing conditions and lure type. Lure. Lures. The best depends on the conditions, but popular choices include soft plastics, crankbaits, spinnerbaits, and topwater lures. It's all stuff you're just covering. You're like, yep. Effective yeah. fishing techniques. Cover fishing. Focus on areas of structure like rocks, weeds, or beds. Uh, I, I, I really, that's, is that a technique? You kind of already told us. Anyways. Retrieve slow. Yeah. Often a slow and steady retrieve will attract, uh, entice a bass to strike. Um, you always, always are talking about the strike, the like retrieve, but why did it yeah. specifically say slowly, right? Yeah. I don't know why it would say slow and steady. Yeah. I thought that was very weird to throw in there. Um, vary yeah. your presentation. Experiment with different lures and actions and retrieves to find out what works best. Mm-hmm. Learn and read the water. Pay attention to the water clarity, temperature, current. Uh, determine the best fishing spots for and use technique, or and then adjust your technique. Additional tips: practice patience. Bass fishing can be challenging, so be patient and persistent. Learn from others. This was like the fucking AI. I was like, "Woo, go AI!" Learn from others. Talk to other anglers and learn from their experiences. I was like. Nice. Yeah. You're right there with us. That's Man, why we man. fucking made the podcast. And then it goes, consider hiring a guide. If you want to fucking learn the ropes, get a guide. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. say it in those words, but that's the summary of it. Yeah. And I was like, "I'm whoa, <laughs> what a big difference. Yeah. Huge difference. Because the first one was just goofy and trying to like give you all these random ass analogies and stuff that we were shitting on it for. That second one, for the most part, nailed it. But it didn't, like, the slow and steady is weird. Yeah. Where it didn't give any specifics on a lot of the shit. But then it gives specifics on, like, the one thing that's not quite right. (laughs) To just be, like, a slow and steady retrieve. Well, no. I mean, (laughs) if it's, like, a crankbait, yeah, I guess slow and steady is kind of sometimes, but you still want to, like, switch it up a lot. Like, pauses and twitches, and you just want to, like, Mm-hmm. You know, it's a straight up steady retrieve can be the ticket sometimes, but very often that's not what you do with most of the lures. Mm. You know, you're always like jerk bait, soft plastic, like literally everything but crankbaits. You don't really, <laughs> except for like for like a whopper plopper, I guess, is like a, you know, top water where it's got the blade that just goes plop, 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 or a, a spinner bait wow. or, uh, uh, like buzz bait, like those are all like you cast out and you just kind of retrieve in mm-hmm. a spinner bait is more of like, you can let it fall and shit, but even still like you, a lot of times you want to pause and you want to do stuff. It's not mm-hmm. like a steady retrieve. It's oftentimes definitely depending on like the, the temperature of the water and the time of year, but like a more erratic action can get the, the trigger, the strike yeah, or to let it die. Like on a calm day, mm pop that soft plastic like a fluke a couple pop 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 make it look like a fish that's struggling Mm -hmm. and then kill it just stop moving it all together and when it falls it comes out and hits it because it can't pass up that easy meal it Mm. saw the fish struggle and then it saw the fish not move Mm -hmm. and then it comes and eats that shit because it's an opportunistic feeder which is what it said that part it nailed it but the part that i thought was weird is when it's like randomly talking about different stuff and it's like, you ask it how to bass fish. And then it goes, yeah, do this and that. And he goes, uh, but 
definitely adjust your presentation to water clarity, this and that. And it hit like very broad topics mm -hmm. with a tweak it for that. And you go like, how? You didn't tell us any of that part. Like a, <laughs> a novice fisherman is going, asking AI what I should do. And yeah. AI says you should fish around weeds and this and that, and you should do this. And it goes, here's a couple of different things you should use. Soft plastic, crankbaits and stuff. And then just goes, ah, but pay attention to clear the water clarity, the, the temperature, the, the current. water temperature, the current. And then you go, what the fuck does that? I think that would confuse you more. You go, okay, so if there's yeah higher current and the water's cold and dingy, how do I adjust it? And the AI is like, you just do what Te a stupid fucking question. <laughs> Techniques. Techniques. Yeah. You adjust but it, it. Was, but it was a very, it, but it would very much like, here are some techniques. And it just says, yeah, retrieve slowly. You're like, what? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why. It, and cover so, fishing, like to, to the techniques thing. It also did like it, the techniques were shit. I just, I think cover fishing, focus on areas with structure like rocks, logs, or weed beds. No, 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 no. You told me that that's what they like. So I know that I'm going to go look for that. How is that a yeah. technique to focus not, on that? That's not yeah. a fishing technique. Yeah, so it didn't nail it 100%. It did a really good job on a lot of it. But yeah. there are parts that it screwed up a little bit. And it wouldn't have taken that long to do it, you know? Yeah. Where it could have just been like, water clarity plays a role. In clearer water, try to make it look more natural. But in dingy water, use brighter colors. Oh, in yeah. Colder, in, in the case of water temperature, a wider wobble can work better in the, you know, like... Uh, wider wobble or more action can work better yeah. in warmer waters and yeah. colder water, a tighter vibration like, and then, you know, name whatever, a lipless crankbait yeah. can work better in colder waters. Right. And that would have been those, that, that's not that many words really when you think yeah. about it. Like that would have been effective techniques, but the techniques are just... <laughs> Yeah, the techniques yeah. are weird, I but mean, I love that it was been... just like practice patience. Bass fishing can be challenging. Like that was yeah never talked about in the other one, and it's just like yeah, no. man. Like that's part of the experience. You got to enjoy yeah. that being patient part and that hunt and the yeah, you know, it, it put some cool shit in there. It's definitely doing like a little bit of like what we think on both ends of the spectrum. Sure, like where it's yeah, the second one was being more informative and not being scared you know talk, <laughs> go talk to somebody uh -huh. that knows how to fish you're like right. okay nice right good you know not being the weird like don't don't worry about what anybody else has to say go figure it out for yourself like it's just saying like other people have done this before right why don't you go and ask their advice yeah like that's a great tip and the other one was like, why don't we try to zhuzh it up a little bit, help people remember the story yeah, by giving some like funny analogies and stuff. And yeah. then, but it like missed the point because it was just saying weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yep. it's like, it's like both of those things combined is kind of like what we're shooting for. And yeah. Neither of them did a perfect job on either point, but right. Both of them, if you had no idea what you were doing and you asked AI, they both pointed you in the right direction. Right. Yeah. So they didn't do a bad job. Yeah. Not even <clears throat> not even being an avid bass fisherman. I, I agree because we've been doing this podcast for so long and, you know, I've yeah. been around you for so many years and fishing and I fished with you and other friends. And so, like, I get it. I, you know, I understand it. I speak the language. I, I, I yeah. do fish myself. I, <clears throat> I get it. And I agree that like not being as avid as a fisherman as you are, I have, yeah, I picked up on the same thing. Like this would work, but there's well, better ways to learn. Yeah. And when we were talking about like the different prompts too, with the AI before, when we were kind of touching on, you know, where 
we're telling it to, hey, make a ninja fish shirt. Uh, yeah. And then it makes it. And then we go, hey, make it a little bit more like a fish, like after we don't get exactly what we want. Right. I'm sure you could have done that with the AI too, where it's yep. just like use different techniques. And then you go, hey, AI, can you explain to me what some of those techniques are? Right. Instead you could of just telling me to use different techniques. Right. You know, that yep. kind of shit. Yep, for sure. So, I I think it's a tool that honestly currently it feels like a really good version of Google. Right. Where instead of having to like look through all the articles, yeah, myself, yeah, I can just be like AI tell me what you found on the internet <laughs> and then AI summarize the internet for me please. Yeah summarize the internet and then that weird first one is just like it's like all the cool kids at the party and you just go can you say it different than that <laughs> you're being weird right now <laughs> <laughs> oh that'd be great oh shit all right tim that's that's a enough that's a great note to end the fishing topic on you ready to go into uh the random take Yep. Talking about some trading cards? Hell yeah. All right. Fuck yeah. Here we go. Hit the break.